This is the inside of the 2018 Benamar Melio 201. If I firstly move to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volt on by firstly pushing this bot button here, followed by this button. You'll now see that the interior lights have all come on. These can all be turned on and off on their own switches. Next we have water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out of the tap, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. And then we have the button for the awning light. Buttons along the bottom mainly give us information. So this first one here will give us the condition of the leisure battery. And then beside it, this one here will give us a condition of the vehicle battery. Next we have how much water is in the fresh tank. When the waste tank needs emptying, a red light will begin to flash next to the waste tank symbol just here. And when the fresh water drops to the last amber one just here, this will occasionally flash to let you know you're getting low on water. And again, if either of the batteries were low, again, you'll get flashing indicators to let you know. This last button just here just controls the illumination of the actual control panel itself. This illumination here is just letting us know that we're currently connected to mains electricity. And the one above it will illuminate when the engine is started to let you know that the alternator is charging both vehicle and leisure battery. To view this, both of these buttons do have to be on though. If I now drop just underneath it, we have the Truma control panel for the heating and hot water. You'll see at the moment it's just displaying the time and it's letting us know that we've got mains electricity connected. If I now press the button, you will now see a series of icons appears. And as I rotate it, they will begin to flash. So if we start with the first icon, this one here is for your heating. So you'll see it's currently off. If I now rotate it, we can select whatever temperature we would like it to be inside the motorhome and it will go right the way up to 30 degrees. So once you've decided on the temperature, just click to store it in and you'll now see a little flames appeared above. That little flame there just represents the heating system and it's just letting you know that you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is in operation, the flame will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If we now move across to the next icon, this one here is for your hot water. And again, if I now click on it, hot water is off. And if I now rotate, I can heat hot water in eco mode which will give us a water temperature of about 40 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can put it in hot, which will give us a temperature of about 60 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other, or if you just want hot water very quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating is in operation, it will turn the heating off as it needs to use the extra power to do it. And again, the icon will continue to flash until it has achieved the temperature you've asked. As you can see, the heating isn't running. It's just because it's above 30 degrees in here today as it is a warm day. If I now rotate to the next icon just here, this one is for power source selection. So currently to heat hot water, I am using, indicated by the two lightning strikes up here, mains electricity using two kilowatts. If I rotate the button, I can lower the power consumption to one kilowatt. Very handy if we're on a low amp site to try and avoid tripping. 
we can put it in dual fuel if we have both power sources available to us. So a mixture of gas and mains at two kilowatts or a mixture of gas and mains at one. These settings are very handy, especially in the winter months. This will get you up to temperature nice and quickly and it will only consume gas as it's required. And then lastly, if we have no main supply, we can literally run on gas. Next we have the circulation fan for the heating. So we can either run the fan in eco mode or high mode. If I now go and turn off hot water and the heating and now return back to that fan, we can also use it to vent the motorhome. It has a fan speed of one to 10 and then it will just push the air around on a warm day. If I now drop to the lower icons, this first one here is for a basic timer. If I now click on it, you'll see that the timer can be set here. So if I now rotate, we can set a start time like so, and then when we would like it to end, and then we just decide what we would like on between those two time periods. Once we've done this, lastly timer on or off, and if I now put the timer on, you'll see the timer icon comes up there, and now within that time period, those settings would apply. If I now turn it back off, the next time we go into it, we can then alter it again. Next, we just have the actual clock set itself. And then lastly, we have the settings menu. And in here, we just have offset for the onboard thermostat. So if you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly adjust it. We then have temperature, just if you prefer it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Brightness of the screen. 12 or 24 hour clock. Language. Index, which is more for the technicians. It just lets them know what software it's running. And then lastly, full factory reset. So from time to time, these control panels can throw up error codes. They will usually be something relatively basic. An error code will appear as a warning triangle, and oh, you'll also get a series of numbers and letters. And then if you look in the manual or you Google it, you can find out what the problem is. As I said, they will usually be something relatively basic, so it might be letting you know that you've currently not got main supply connected because you've tripped or the lead isn't connected. Or if you're trying to run it on gas and you've depleted your gas bottle or it's not turned on, etc. So these are relatively easy fixes. So if you sort the issue out, the error code will usually automatically disappear. If that's not the case, just go back to the warning triangle and double click on it. It will then sometimes say no error and then the error code will disappear. If this still doesn't happen, if you've still got stuff running like I have at the moment, just make sure it's all turned off because it can reassess a lot faster when it's not trying to do lots of things at once. If this still doesn't solve the problem, I then always suggest the good old fashioned turn it off, turn it back on again. Just hold the button in until it says off. If when you turn it back on again, you still have the error code, I always then say just do the factory reset because sometimes that's all these control panels require. Just up here we have the smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm. Just press the buttons from time to time to make sure they are working as they are both battery operated. We then have a main socket, 12 volt socket, an aerial fly lead in just here. And then we have the TV bracket just here. The fresh water tank is just located underneath the travel seating just here. So if I now just remove the cushions and I now just remove the cover, see we have the fresh water tank just here. So we can gain access into it just by unscrewing the cap just here if we want to add cleaning powders to it. 
We then have the water pump just there. To make the two travel seats, this section here just drops. So if I now just go directly underneath it, you'll see that there's levers. You just pull both of them at the same time to then drop the section down. And then just pop your cushion back on again. And then you have your two travel seats. Whilst this has dropped down, we can see this little switch here. It's on when it's illuminated. This is the switch for the waste tank heater. So if you are using the motorhome in cold climate, you can pop this on to avoid any frost damage occurring to the waste tank. The freshwater tank does not have one, as as you've just seen, it is an internal tank. To operate the table, you'll find that there's a grey lever just here, and if I now just slide that across, this will now allow it to move from side to side and then to lock it back into place just push it across and it then becomes solid. We can also rotate the table just by pulling down just here and then it will rotate around. If I now just loosen off both sides we can then fold it out and make it into a much larger table. So as you can see I can now slide it across like so and then just flap it over and then all we then do is we just tighten everything back up again and then you have a nice large dinette table. Hob just here, so we've got two gas rings and one electric hot plate. This will work when the motorhome is connected to main supply and it operates just here. So the red light comes on just to let you know it's in operation. And to light the gas rings, just push in, twist, and push the igniter. Directly beneath we then have the oven and grill. To light the oven just push in to the left and again just press the igniter. And then for the grill push in to the right. Extract the fan above, so we have light on and off just here, and then fan on and off just here. Above it, small amount of storage, Some, most of it's taken up because the extractor vents at this point just here. Also in here we have the digital amplifier for the television aerial on the roof. We don't really need to do anything with this, just make sure that the blue light is on before tuning a television in. Beside that is the solar panel regulator. You'll see we have a light on just here, just letting us know that the panel is receiving UV light. And then a green light just here, letting us know that it's basically in float mode at the moment and not really required. Whenever it's popping a charge into either battery, an amber light will appear here. And if there's a problem with the unit, you will get a red light appear in this alarm window. Directly beneath it is the iNet box. So this is what you use if you want to control your heating in your hot water via the Truma app. If you are going to do this, firstly download the Truma app onto your device. Once you've done that, make sure the Bluetooth is turned on and then launch the app and then follow the on-screen instructions after pressing remote control. It will firstly ask you to come to this box and press the Bluetooth button, which is just located just where my finger is just here. You'll see the blue light will begin to flash and it will send the signal out and then you'll be able to connect up. 
Once you've connected up, you can then control your heating and your hot water through the app locally via Bluetooth. What you can also do is pop a pay-as-you-go SIM card in, just where my finger is here, register it through the app, and then once you've done this, you can control your heating and your hot water from much further afield. Microwave just here. Always advisable to make sure that all contents are removed for travel. This again will work when you're hooked up to main supply. We have all the usual, as you can see this is a grill and a combination as well. Just press between your power settings just here, then your grill, and then your combination. We then have quick start and stop just here. Cutlery drawer just here, and then also in here you'll find the gas isolation taps for all of the appliances. You'll see that the barbecue one is turned off at the moment. It can be left on if you want to, but this makes sure that nobody can siphon any gas off from the outside. We then have the cooker, the fridge, and the heating and hot water just here. Beside that is the Dometic fridge. So on and off just here. First one is two pin plug. So this would be running the fridge now on mains electricity. If we don't have main supply connected, we can run the fridge on gas. These particular fridges auto ignite themselves, so you don't need to do anything else apart from just make sure that the gas is turned on. And then lastly we have a little picture of a battery which is 12 volt maintain, which is what you have it on to keep the fridge cold whilst on the move. At the moment if I press this, it's going to beep at us and we're going to get a red little error just here because the engine isn't running. And again, you would get this sound if you were trying to run it on main supply and you had no mains, or if you're trying to run it on gas and you had no gas. If you think that it's failed to lie, just down to the fact that there might be a bit of air in the system, just press the button just here, and this will reset it, and it will then try again. Temperature control just here. And then if I just push down, you can then open the door. You'll see the freezer box just at the top here and this is removable. There are just clips to take it out. Above my head just here is the Omnivent fan. Firstly wind the roof vent open and then just push the middle button just here to turn the unit on and then we have arrows out for extraction and arrows in for cooling and it's variable fan speed just by pressing Remember to make sure that all roof vents are closed for travel. Washroom just here. 